Hey AP students, in this video I want to teach you how to write a great thesis statement. How about we begin by looking at a couple thesis formulas. So number one, x, however, a and b, therefore y. Number two is my favorite, and it's actually the one that I encourage my students to use. Although x, y, because of a and b. So what do all the letters stand for, and, and what does it all mean? X is your counter argument. In history, we talk about topics sometimes that are controversial, um, sometimes not as controversial, but every time you, you look at a topic, there's always an opposite view. There's an opposing view. There's a counter argument. I want you to dedicate one body paragraph of your essay to the X, the counter argument. You always begin with the other side of the story. A and B are your categories of analysis. And they're also going to be developed into body paragraphs. Why is the argument itself? It needs to be consistent throughout the entire essay. So typically in an A-push essay, you have an introduction, three body paragraphs, D, C, X, A, and B. And then you have a conclusion if you have enough time to get to that conclusion. The argument just needs to be consistent throughout the entire essay. In another video, I'll show you how to write topic sentences and clincher sentences in your body paragraphs that will tie the main point you're making all the way right back to this thesis statement itself. So think about this way for the counter argument for the X part. If you're if you have a positive argument in Y, start with writing something very negative about the topic and then vice versa. If you're making a very negative argument, maybe think about writing something very positive in the X part in the very, very beginning. So let's look at some examples. I'm sure I'll, hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll be able to uh, clear up some confusion going forward. So three types of essays, three thinking skills that you will encounter on the A-Push exam itself. How about we begin with the first one, causation essays. Typically the easiest argument to make if you're getting a causation essay where it's asking for causes, sometimes effects, sometimes both causes and effects, is usually that the effects of something are more significant than the causes. Like think about the civil rights movement, for example. Let's hope that the effects of the civil rights movement are more important than what caused it. So usually it's easiest to argue that, um, but it's possible, sometimes easier to argue the opposite. Now, there's a couple of extra layers with causation essays. Sometimes it'll only ask for causes. In that case, you just want to say that one cause is more important than the rest. Sometimes you might get an essay that asks solely for effects. And if that is the case, then you just need to argue, well, that one effect is greater than maybe these other two effects. So just pay attention to the prompt. What is it asking you to do? Is it asking for only causes, only effects, or both? So here's an example here. So you see the formula, and just kind of look how this lines up. Although the buildup of new militaristic technology was a cause, ultimately a complicated alliance system and competition for foreign lands were the most significant driving factors behind the outbreak of World War I, a causation type of essay. And those two words, most significant or more significant, those are deadly in making a great argument in a thesis statement. So just think about that going forward. The second type of essay or the second thinking skill I want to address will be comparison essays, where you're talking about similarities, and differences. Typically in this type of essay, what's, most, um, what's the easiest argument to make? Usually that the differences are more significant than the similarities of a topic. However, as always, sometimes it's easier to argue the opposite. So the hard part about it is just the thesis statement has to address both similarities and the differences. So let me give you an example. There's the formula. Look how it lines up. Despite differences in the treatment of minorities, the 1920s and 50s have more significant similarities in regard to secular culture and technological advances. So you, hopefully you can kind of see that they will dedicate one body paragraph to the differences in treatment of minorities, but they'll have two body paragraphs dedicated to secular culture and technological advances. Let's look at the third and final thinking skill. This is the third and final type of essay you'll encounter potentially on the A-Push exam. Continuity and change over time. What stayed the same and what has changed over time. The easiest argument to make in this type of essay is that what changed over time is more significant than what persisted over the course of a time period. And then, as always, sometimes it's easier to argue the opposite. It's just your preference when you get to that particular essay. The trouble is the thesis has to address both continuity and changes over time. So here's an example for you. Although violent clashes with police and discrimination persisted throughout the civil rights movement, 
The movement itself was an overall success due to the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 64 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. So what this tells me this person is going to do is they're going to dedicate one paragraph about discrimination and violent clashes, and then they're going to dedicate two body paragraphs to the buildup to the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the buildup to the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Now, frequently asked questions, what is a thesis statement and how is it different than just a regular statement? One thing I want to address as we kind of go through the rest of this is that it can be multiple sentences. It has to answer the, the, the prompt of the essay and it lays out the main ideas of each supporting body paragraph. It makes an argument that makes it different than just a regular blanket statement. Where does it go? It's the final couple sentences. It can be a little bit more than that, too, maybe three sentences, but it, it's the final part of your introduction. Can you put it anywhere else in the essay? Actually, you can. If you feel like you didn't do a good job with your thesis statement to begin off with, maybe think about trying it again in your conclusion. But don't be like, like some students and just write the same conclusion. Maybe try and make it more argumentative, reword it in a way that might make get that point if you don't feel confident in the very beginning of the essay. The counterpoint is the first part of your thesis statement. You're acknowledging the lesser important aspect of the prompt. How many main points should be in a thesis? You got three main points. Of course, you got X, and then you got the A and the B. But you're trying to structure your writing to a standard five-paragraph essay that includes an intro and a conclusion. However, the good news is um, you're not specifically locked in. Um, the College Board doesn't mandate that you have to write a specifically five-paragraph essay, just enough to follow the rubric itself. So, like as mentioned before, how do you make it argumentative? I like adding the words more so, to a greater extent, most significant. Um, that'll help you take a position in your topic as well. Why is this such a big deal? Everything ties back to the thesis statement itself. There are two, um, the two thesis points for the APUSH, ALEQ, and DBQ amount to about 6% of the total exam. And that's just the cumulative APUSH exam itself. You have to write an LEQ. You have to write a DBQ. I've got videos on those. You can look at those later on as well. Um, additionally, not earning the thesis point puts an essay in immediate, immediately in jeopardy of not earning at least two additional points. So it's just very important. Everything ties back to this. What if you get a question with the phrase, to what extent in it? So in your thesis statement, if you're, if you're starting to write this, you look at the prompt and it says, to what extent... If a question focuses on a change over a set of period of time, the thesis must examine the extent of that change, which means how much change there was and how much things stayed the same. There will always be some change and some continuity for these types of questions. So if it says to what extent, here's what you need to think about. To a great extent, to a small extent, to no extent is what you would need to argue in your thesis statement. To no extent, things changed. Um, after the passage of the 19th Amendment. I had a student argue that many years ago and wrote a very interesting essay that things did not change after women earning the right to vote with the 19th Amendment. Look for keywords to anticipate causation prompts. So if you get a causation type of a prompt, look for cause, effect, impact, consequences, evaluate. Keywords to anticipate for comparison prompts, similarities, differences, compare and contrast. Keywords to anticipate for continuity and change over time types of essays. Changed, remain, maintaining continuity, foster change. Those all typically work for those types of prompts. Um, if the thesis formulas were too confusing for you, um, if that doesn't make that much sense, maybe look at some of these simplified thesis statement formulas that you could use. If you get a causation question, uh, it's possible to get a point with a thesis uh, a thesis statement point, if you say the main causes of the Civil War included these two things, but perhaps the most significant of these causes was this one thing. So think about having at least one short-term cause and at least one long-term cause. For an effects type of question, again, the main effects of the American Revolution included these two things. However, or perhaps the most significant of these effects was this one thing. So kind of the same type of situation. For comparison essay, the most significant similarities between issue one and issue two involving the main topic of the question were at least these two similarities. But perhaps the most significant differences 
between the issue one and issue two involving the main topic of the question were um, at least these two differences. So for a continuity and change over time type of question, the most significant continuities involving the main topic of the question were at least these two, content, two continuities. But the most significant changes involving uh, the main topic of the question were at least these two changes as well. So maybe consider those as well. Also, here's another example. Some students have said this is something that benefits them. This is not something I teach very frequently in my class, but I'm just put, putting it out there. Maybe it could help you as well. To a lesser extent, your counter argument. However, to a greater extent, your two main points or your reasons. So here's an example. To a lesser extent, the colonists' resistance to British authority was influenced by their resentment of British trade restrictions. However, to a greater extent, the colonists' belief that they had the right to govern themselves and a growing colonial identity played a large role. So we're setting ourselves up for um, potentially like a, an American Revolution type of essay itself. So when you look back at all these, let's say that you've got a prompt and you just read your prompt says compare and contrast the home front experiences between minority Americans during the Second World War. So identify the thinking skill. What am I addressing in this prompt? Brainstorming. Think of topics you could use to address in your essay. Political, economic, diplomatic, social helps. But think about crafting a paragraph to be dedicated to those topics. Formulate your thesis statement. Because this is a comparison um, prompt. What is most significant? What position will you take? Similarities or differences? Let me give you an example. Although they shared discrimination in their everyday lives, American minorities differed more so in the amount of legislation passed to address their needs and their contributions to the battlefront during World War II. Another example, evaluate major changes and continuities in the social and economic experiences of women and minorities during World War II. So again, identify the thinking skill for this one. Well, you can see changes and continuities. We know it's going to be change over time and continuities. Think of brainstorming. I've got a video that kind of dedicated that, that kind of show you how to brainstorm. Then begin your thesis formula um, and your thesis statements. Think about that formula. What is most significant? Changes or continuities? Probably changes. So here's your example. Despite some resistance to this change in the form of race riots and sexism, American society during World War II saw the largest increase in social status for women and racial minorities that had ever been seen before. Explain the causes and consequences of the existence of slavery and the development of Britain's North American colonies prior to the American Revolution. So identify the thinking skill. Well, we know it's going to be causes and effects. Brainstorming, formulating your thesis statement. What position will you take? Typically, effects are going to be greater. So although slavery developed as a response to the declining Indian labor, its after effects had a far greater impact on the British colonies with the development of a stratified society and the creation of a southern economy dependent upon agriculture. So there's some examples. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope that I've given you a, a lot of examples and a lot of things to think about. If I were you, I would use the formula, although X, Y, because of A and B. To me, that's the easiest one to use. Um, but if you do have any more questions, please let me know. I'd be glad to help out with anything else. Thanks so much for watching.